<clears throat> Russia fires a missile into Poland. Wait, not Russia, Ukraine. It was an accident, or was it? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Over the past two days, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization came close to an Article 4 consultation conference. This happened after two men died when a missile fell on the Polish vessel of P-R-Z-W-O-D-O -O, with an acute accent W pronounced Zhevoda near the Ukrainian border. Now, any of you out there from Poland, if I just smangled that name or mangle any other Polish name, leave a comment. Officials on both sides of the Atlantic at first assumed that the Russian-made missile came from Russia. It didn't. The Poles now admit that Ukraine, not Russia, fired that missile. This turns out to be the latest in a long line of accidents that Ukrainians using Russian-made equipment have caused. But are they accidents, or could they be false flag pseudo-operations designed to widen the conflict between Russia and Ukraine? Before I examine the timeline, the reports, and the evidence, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which reads, Do Not Bear False Witness. And false witness is what this is all about in the last analysis. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the US dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, as long as it's legal tender. All right, here is what we know about the Ukraine missile. The first report of the missile strike, or whatever it was, came from Madeleine Hubbard at Just the News at 2.41 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, November the 15th. She quoted the Associated Press as saying that a missile or missiles had crossed into Poland from the Ukrainian side. The missile or missiles fell into the village of Zhevodov and killed two civilians. Polish television tweeted out footage of the aftermath. I have a link in the description of their tweet and will translate its text for you now. Quote, two Russian missiles on the territory of Poland, the site of the explosion near the border with Ukraine, near Rubisha, unquote, Republic TV, unquote, Republic TV Poland. But early Wednesday morning, the Associated Press was already reporting doubts that the missile came from Russia. First, the AP said there was only one missile, not two. Second, they quoted Polish and American officials as raising the doubts. The missile was, without a doubt, a Russian manufacturer. But Ukraine forces use weapons and munitions of both Russian and American manufacture. Reuters at first reported that Polish authorities were demanding a consultation with other NATO members. Article 4 of the North Atlantic Treaty provides for such consultation whenever anyone suspects an external attack. Then, at 11.42 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, Wednesday, Reuters identify the missile as an S-300, which goes back to the old Soviet Union. Finally, at 12.36 p.m. Eastern, Reuters quoted Polish President Andrzej Duda as saying Ukraine probably fired it. In fact, as early as 6.03 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday morning, the Polish presidential Twitter account carried a message which I, to which I have a link in the description. Quote, There is no evidence that this was an intentional attack on Poland. Most likely it was a Russian-made missile of the S-300 type. 
At the moment, we have no evidence that it was a missile launched by the Russian side. Many points, meaning many indicators, point to the fact that it was an air defense missile which unfortunately fell on the territory of Poland. Unquote, Andrzej Duda. And let me clarify, every translation that I give here comes from Yandex. It does not come from Twitter's translation utility or from any other source. Two hours later, Madeleine Hubbard at Just the News was reporting much the same thing. Now, Russia did launch airstrikes all over Ukraine on Tuesday, and naturally the Ukrainians fired anti-aircraft missiles in self-defense. In this light, what President Duda said makes sense. Furthermore, even President Biden admitted that the trajectory of the missile was inconsistent with the launch from Russia. At 2.38 p.m. Eastern yesterday, Dmitry Medvedev sent a strange message on his Telegram channel. I have a link to it in the description, and it's in Russian. So I ran it through Yandex, and this is what came out. See what you make of it. Quote, And afterward, to the hysteria of the key vessels about their retaliatory strike against Poland. That's what haunts me. If a Ukrainian anti-aircraft missile had hit directly into capital, would it be a Zhrada or a Paramoga? Unquote Dmitry Medvedev. Now, those two words are Ukrainian. That word Zhrada means betrayal. Paramoga apparently means overwhelming victory. Those two words became part of regular Ukrainian discourse after the Maidan Revolution of 2014. The Telegram channel UKR Leaks has some interesting messages that neither AP nor Reuters seem interested in reading. Before I tell you about them, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come, especially if the Biden administration manages to drag us into the Russia-Ukraine conflict any deeper than sending weapons inspectors. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the, pa uh, the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me, uh, like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to uh, collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com and learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, about those messages from UKR leaks. First, they took note that the, that the Russia hits Poland narrative was all over the British media. I have a link to a message in the description. By, and by the way, this is the English version of UKR leaks. They displayed front pages from the Daily Mirror, the Daily Telegraph, and the Times, all with banner headlines blaming Russia. Then they add, and I quote, British journalists are not confused by the fact that two Polish farmers in the village of Przewodov died as a result of the fall of the Ukrainian missile, <coughs> which is not only an air defense missile, but also, in general, could not reach Poland from the territory of Russia. Emphasis theirs. This is claimed by the Western News Agency Associated Press. Even Joe Biden said that the probability of Russia's involvement in the incident is extremely small. However, society is so accustomed to this picture of the world, which has been created by Western media for many years, that unnecessary and inconvenient questions simply do not arise in the head of a regular Western person." Unquote. 
The close quote. And, the, and again, the emphasis is theirs, not mine. Next, they made a more serious allegation. And I have a link to the description to that also. UKR leaks list eight separate incidents of Ukraine causing collateral damage in NATO territory and or casualties among NATO, NATO citizens. One incident, one incident involves an American reporter from the New York Times. The rest involve collateral damage or casualties to assets and or persons from Romania, Estonia, and Turkey. Tuesday's Poland incident is only the latest. And at the bottom of their message, they say, and again, I quote, under the cover of the war with Russia, Ukraine is waging a hybrid war against NATO, close quote. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg acknowledged that the S-300 that fell onto Zhivadov did come from Ukraine. But then he said, and I quote, there is no confirmation that the incident in Poland was the result of deliberate actions. Preliminary information indicates the strike by Ukrainian air defense missiles. But I want to make it clear that this is not Ukraine's fault. Russia bears full responsibility as it continues its illegal war against Ukraine, unquote Jens Stoltenberg. Can you believe that guy? And see if you can believe this. Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, denies that the missile came from his air defenses. This after everyone from U.S. President Biden to Polish President Duda says the trajectory traces back to Ukraine. The head of the city council of Lublin, Poland's ninth largest city, criticized Ukraine and suggested that Warsaw, Warsaw should re-examine its position according to Intel Slava Z. I have a link in the description to the Intel Slava Z message, which quotes the city councillor as saying, I absolutely do not understand the actions of our president and government. It is obvious that this is a Ukrainian missile. It is obvious that this is a provocation on the part of the Ukrainian authorities. The missile could not have been lost 100 kilometers in the opposite direction by mistake. Today, our president should not reassure us with fairy tales like it was not so much a rocket explosion but an explosion of fuel that was there, and it was an accident. But to make it clear to, to V. Zelensky that Poland will no longer tolerate such behavior of the Ukrainian authorities, I urge you to reconsider Poland's position on this war in the event of another crossing of the red line. Close quote. And this is where we have to take a hard look at that UKR leaks accident list. Wherever they identified the equipment involved, it was a Russian manufacturer. Never once did any of these accidents involve American equipment. Now that makes eight accidents since the conflict began, more than half occurring last March. And all of them involving equipment of Russian manufacture. Furthermore, the S-300 figures in more than half of these accidents. Russians would use their most up-to-date equipment, not Soviet-era antiques. UKR Leaks quotes this proverb, It is common for every person to make mistakes, but it is not common for anyone but a fool to persist in a mistake. Close quote. The Roman consul Marcus Tullius Cicero put it more strongly, quote, any man can make mistakes, but only an idiot persists in his error. Close quote. Ukraine has been very persistent indeed, if these were errors. Perhaps this proverb applies, quote, Once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, and the third time it's enemy action. Unquote Ian Fleming. Suppose then, as the Lublin City Council had directly accuses, these are not accidents. Suppose these are false flag pseudo-operations. A false, a false flag pseudo-operation is an operation you run against your own side or your allies while pretending to be the enemy. Now, Ukraine is not a NATO member, but it's asking for NATO's help. So what do they do? They have eight 
accidents with equipment that looks Russian because it is Russian, but antiquated and inferior, all to provoke NATO into jumping feet first into this conflict for their benefit. What do you think? Accident or intention? You decide. And don't forget the FTX scandal. If those Ukrainians were willing to launder money to influence an American election, might they be willing to cause property damage, injury, or death just to cross their border or beyond the Black Sea and pretend that it was their adversary doing it? You gotta wonder. Link in the description to the article, to the tweet from Polish television carrying footage from that little village, <clears throat> to President Duda's clarification that it looked like a Ukrainian missile, to that message from uh, Dmitry Medvedev that I admit is strange, to the UKR leaks messages showing that silly British media and, the, and that accident list, to Intel Slava Z quoting the, that Luba city councillor asking his president to reconsider Polish policy on the conflict, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsuperlives.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to videos I've done before about Ukraine and about this FTX thing. This is Terry A. Hurlman delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, we'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah.